Welcome back to the Tracy Take. I am Tyler here with my brother Brian, and today we are doing the final mock draft for the Green Bay Packers in the 2024 NFL offseason. It's going to be a lot of fun going over all the selections of a full seven-round mock draft, but before we do that, the NBA and NHL playoffs are right around the corner, and with that comes a little bit more fun to uh, bet on a couple of the games, and if you do like to bet on the games that you're watching, uh, and you haven't been to Bet US, they have a great promotion going on right now for all of its first time players of 125% match for your first three deposits. Help you out a little bit and uh, maybe uh, placing a little bit more exciting bets or parlays. So click the link down below to take full advantage of that promotion. While you're at it, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to the Tracy Take to get notified whenever we create new content. I'm trying to get to 3,000 subscribers by the NFL draft, which is just a couple weeks away. We're about 140 away or so as of the recording of this video. So any help, it's greatly appreciated. Brian, let's pull up the slide here. So the Packers, they have a lot of picks in this draft class. Yeah. Uh, and even then, too, just kind of briefly going over some of the main notable uh, departures uh, in addition so far. So they did re-sign Corey Valentine on uh, their corner as well, and they did sign – uh, Xavier McKinney from New York, but they did lose Darnell Savage and Jonathan Owens as well. And so that's kind of where our thought process is going with a very athletic player here like Cooper DeGene. I think he does have that versatility. He's probably just one of the – a lot of people have been saying he's just the best ball corner um, or secondary member, so to say, in this class. And so I think what that me uh, what that brings is a lot of versatility for the Packers team uh, and a team with that just really struggling on the secondary just in general. You know, uh, yeah. struggle to be healthy, struggle to play well. And if it wasn't really, honestly, for that front seven, and then also the, the amazing development of the offensive side of the ball, the Packers team uh, definitely would uh, have been hindered by the Packers secondary. Um, and I think improving that here, I think going and getting Xavier McKinney was was uh, a good addition. I think going to get Cooper DeGene, just a super athletic guy. Also, as well, too, with his special team capabilities and what he was able to do at Iowa and with the new rules, uh, on the kickoff, I think that actually even adds a little bit more added value to him going here in the first round. I know he's been hurt, didn't really go in the combine. He did just have his pro day uh, not too long ago, uh, so answered some questions there. But I still think you're a guy like Cooper DeGene. Also, he's from Iowa, you know, so yeah. it, it's like I feel like he, I feel like he's a Packer already. <laughs> yeah, and I know we did we mocked this in uh, I think a previous mock draft, and Packers fans weren't super happy. Uh, with the DeGene pick, but I still think relying back on his versatility and just his overall athleticism, I think this is just a, a, a solid pick here. And also picking at 25, I believe all five corners, Quinion Mitchell, Terran Arnold, Kool-Aid uh, McKinstry, and Nate Wiggins all went like right before this. Uh, yeah. And so he is the cornerback on the board for them. And I, I think he's also probably one of the better players available. And so I think that's just it's kind of hard to pass up, right? When the best player available matches, you're probably one of your, one of your need, one of your biggest needs, if not your biggest need, that's just, that's just hard to pass up. Even if there's a couple things you maybe you don't like about him. Uh, and for me, I just yeah. go look at his athletic pedigree. If you've not heard the Cooper DeGene story, uh, just go, go research Cooper DeGene for like 10 minutes and you'll be amazed. So uh, let's move on. They have uh, two second round picks, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and so the first one here, uh, the interior offensive line, I believe that they only have one left guard on the roster at the moment. And Jordan Morgan, I know he's listed at uh, a left tackle. However, this is going to sound so stupid. He has 32 and seven eighth inch arms. And that's simply just going to be too short. The threshold for the NFL is 33 inches. And I know we're literally talking about an eighth of an inch, but Peter Skaronsky who was one of the best offensive line prospects that we've seen in a long time uh, last year, had 32 and a half inch arms. And even he did make it at the NFL level at left tackle and the Titans had to play him at left guard, even though they desperately needed a left tackle. And so I think Jordan Morgan, he kicks in and is instantly that left guard. And at that spot, he's a great athlete. He has great size and strength uh, and even like pretty solid technique as well. Again, he should he would be a left tackle if that threshold was an eighth of an inch shorter. Yeah, yeah. And so. I think one of the things as well, too, if you go back and look at the last pick as well, um, Graham Barton was the next pick taken. And that's right. Yeah. I, I think what Green Bay is going to be doing, I think they can address secondary, but they even have versatility as well if they want to go Graham Barton there 
address the interior offensive line and then try and get a secondary here because there's a lot of other good guys that were on the board that were taking just a couple picks later. Like TJ Tampa, I think, would be a good corner you know, yeah. for the second round. And actually, too, I, I think we we um, might be able to kind of see a couple other corners that were picked around their next pick. We're going to get a guy like Jordan Morgan here, extremely versatile. Then they go and get a Desa Isaac as well, edge rusher kind of focusing then uh, on the defensive line, still focusing on the trenches here. I think – Kind of a luxury pick, so I, I think this could be kind of a, um, it's best play available for a lot of the team. But I think defense is going to be the primary focus overall, just because on the skill position players, uh, we obviously saw what they did with their, how young the receiving room is last year. The tight ends they signed Josh Jacobs as well. They've already addressed the interior offensive line. I think their offensive line is going to be uh, um, in general set and potentially even much improved uh, um, overall. So I think focusing on defense is getting that defense even better. Getting a guy like Adesa Isaac, who is very versatile and, and at minimum just provides some consistency. You know, like he might not yeah. have the highest ceiling, but he doesn't have the lowest floor of, of uh, any of the edge rushers here. Yeah. And so they have Rashawn Gary, and then they just invested in uh, Lucas Van Ness in the first round of last year. And so for me, going and getting just another edge rusher to kind of come in and be a part of that rotation, especially one with as much talent as him, I think is just a really, really solid pick here. I will, I will say it was at this point Tyler and I realized that the Packers already have a pretty well-rounded roster, so we just kind of started drafting best player available on our board. And It was also, really hard, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it, it, you, you look at all the positions, you're like, no, I like that player, I like that I, player. We've already addressed secondary. Yeah. We're going to address secondary again. <laughs> and so and, they, they have a really good roster. Yeah, and then also, too, I think you look, if we wanted to wait on edge, it kind of falls off a cliff after this pick. I mean, you have Braylon Trice and a few other guys uh, that are going to be available in the third round, but then there's some overlap with Van Ness. And so uh, I, I really like uh, th this pick here. I think he he does fit opposite of Rashawn Gary. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and move on now to their two third round picks. They are pretty close together. So we just put them on one slide. Kalen Bullock, uh, kind of that Xavier McKinney role where he's going to play a little bit more on the back end. Uh, has some concerns with size. He's only like 190 pounds, but he has a, a really good speed and instincts that uh, you want from somebody that's going to play in that single high safety. And then Blake Fisher, the right tackle from Notre Dame, super young. He's only going to be 21 come the start of the year, uh, but just a phenomenal right tackle prospect. He, I think, just kind of gets slightly overlooked simply because he played next to Joe Alt, um, who is one of the best left tackle prospects we've probably ever seen. And for me, Blake, like Blake Fisher, that's really good value here at 91. Yeah, yeah. And similar as, as kind of what we said about Caleb Bullock coming in and then uh, losing two safeties already. And then you get Cooper DeGene, who could be that athletic corner slash safety. You know, I kind of maybe seen this new kind of hybrid secondary team member, something similar how we're seeing with the outline, uh, outside linebacker and edge rusher. Uh, and so just investing then more in the secondary as well than Blake Fisher, as, as you mentioned. Uh, keep improving that offensive line, just adding more depth uh, as we move forward then into day three. And day three, they have a lot of picks as well. They just have a lot of picks in general. Here. Yeah. So uh, we did want to get them a uh, skill position player, and Anaya Smith is a guy that we feel is probably maybe a little bit different uh, than what they have currently. You know there's a lot of good receivers uh, but I think what we saw Matt LaFleur do with this office and how we saw them overall develop, a guy like Anaya Smith, that gadget guy, that really quick guy, uh, I, I think uh, uh, it's just another tool in the arsenal, uh, um, another tool in the toolbox, so to say, uh, for Matt LaFleur to just get as creative as possible and just continue to keep putting defenses on, uh, um, uh, on their heels. Yeah, yeah. And I really like him. He played running back as well. Uh, he's probably too small to play that at the NFL level, but again, just uh, yeah. to kind of speak to how well he carries the ball after that. And so just to quickly wrap up here, uh, invest in that defensive interior with Gabe Hall, uh, continue to add some interior offensive line depth with Dylan McMahon, uh, Darius Ma Muasa, uh, Tanner McLaughlin, and then Evan Anderson again. Uh, I do think uh, with the new special teams rules, getting linebackers, tight ends, and safeties in the back, Sorry, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to power through, and that just was not working. Uh, but getting linebackers, tight ends, and safeties here at the back end of uh, day three, uh, just to get guys that can contribute on special teams because you're going to need guys that can block and tackle in space. And so uh, I, I just think that's going to be a trend that we see this year is a big uptick in those positions. But 
All in all, I mean, I I would be really happy with this draft as a Packers fan. I know I'm a little biased since we did it, but I think they got good players at good spots. They uh, have a ton of draft capital. And so adding, I mean, even in the third round, you're picking guys that are pro- most likely going to be backups in their, in their first year already. And like they, they just build really solid depth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's teams are already so young to begin with. So it was, yeah. It's kind of hard to – Josh Jacobs now might be one of the older players on the offense, uh, if we're being honest. Um, I have yeah. to go and look at it. But uh, it, it's it, their biggest thing, can they just keep developing? I, I mean, they came on so strong last year in the second half of the season. And, and honestly, you, you can make an argument that they were probably one of the better teams in the playoffs, and maybe even better uh, than the Super Bowl champs, Kansas City. Uh, they, they just kind of let San Francisco back in that game and unfortunately couldn't capitalize on, on – uh, uh, their opportunities uh, late in the game. So uh, a lot to see how the Packers keep developing. The NFC North is just going to be absolutely loaded next year. Yeah, but let's go ahead and wrap up this mock draft here. If you guys have not already, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below on what you thought of this Packers mock draft. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you do differently? And then that, we'll see you guys next time.